Hey everyone, we're back for another Cleaning and Cocktails live episode. We are in the home of North American. This is a huge, huge brand in the cleaning industry. Uh, we're in our hometown, not in Chicago, but in Glenview. So one of the suburbs outside of Chicago. And I'm here with Costa and Eric. Costa is the sales director for commercial real estate. Eric is the, the man. He is the GM for, for the, the company here in the Glenview office. And you guys know that, the, again, this season is about meeting our, our, not just our audience, but meeting the industry experts and the brands where they are. Again, the emphasis of the show is what? Empowering the cleaning industry, right? Well, these gentlemen uh, work for a great brand within our industry, and I wanted to give them the opportunity to share a lot of the story behind North American. So we're going to walk and talk throughout the facility, but we're at a pretty good spot here that I think the, the guys have a unique story behind uh, the artifact that's behind us, and it's going to lead into our talk about the 100 years of North American. So Costa, Eric, take us away on introduce yourselves a little yeah. bit and, and let's get this going. Yeah, for sure. Coast Eckelman, commercial real estate for Chicago sales director. Uh, grateful to have Ricky here and the team. I mean, we've been around 104 years now. I've been here six years at North American, right here in Glenview. And uh, although we're an older company, we've been around for a long time. We've got a lot of experience and it's kind of cool that cleaning cocktails is kind of bringing us to the, the new future and uh, the new way of uh, marketing to all of our customers and clients because we do have a really cool story. And we're really proud of that. And so, yeah, glad, glad to be here and glad to, to have Ricky and the team. Yep. Yeah, and as Ricky said, my name is Eric Dyler, uh, General Manager of North American here in Glenview. And, and again, appreciate the opportunity. You mentioned the artifact behind us. You know, uh, North American started as a family business and has uh, come through its fourth generation. So the, the waterfall behind us that's not on right now uh, represents the four generations of the Miller family, the founding family of North American. So it's pretty cool to start with this uh, when talking about the business. Yeah, man. I mean... Again, 100 years, 104 yeah. years, four generations. Uh, I'm big, obviously, on family businesses. You guys mm -hmm. know I have a family cleaning company myself. Uh, so I'm excited to learn more. Again, Absolutely. I know you, Costa, Percy, mm -hmm. right? Eric, I've met you before. I know the brand, but I think this is a great opportunity to just share a little bit more behind yeah. the story of the brand. So again, you guys, follow us, walk with us, so you guys can learn a little bit more, not just about the brand, but about you two gentlemen as well. Absolutely. All right. So... You just said 100 years. I mean, what, what does this mean? Or what does this picture represent? Or, so or stand at our 100-year anniversary, we actually had a nice celebration at the Shedd Aquarium downtown. And this was one of the displays we had at the Shedd Aquarium. We rented out the whole entire facility. It was such a proud milestone in our company's history. So we felt like it would be great to mention all of the, the families that represent the employees. And, uh, you know, when you look close, you can see everyone. But oh, all, yeah. of the, all of the people make up our brand and our company. It takes takes uh, the parts to make up the sum, right? So it's all a team effort. Nah, it's a beautiful collage. Cause again, uh, I, many people say this, right guys, but like we're in the people business, Absolutely. right? This industry yeah. is about the people. Yeah, and we do it for the people. So awesome. You know, reputation is everything. So I'm excited behind those doors. We're gonna keep it going guys. And, and again, walk, walk us through, show us, you know, tell us more about the facility. So let's, let's go through here, the showroom area. So when you, when you walk in here, there's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> we have, uh, Ricky, as you know, Envision, and that's our marketing solutions arm of our company. We represent a lot of brands and their marketing solutions. Costa, Eric, I got a question because, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. I'm walking inside and I'm seeing everything that I see. Envision, like where did the idea of Envision come from? Because, again, outside looking in, I'm, lo I'm thinking this is a, a Jansan, you know, type of company. And... This is a lot more than Jan said. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a great story. So the so John Miller, third generation owner when Costa and I mm -hmm. uh, entered the business, <clears throat> we do a lot of business in a lot of diverse industries, but within a hospitality company, the CEO of that hospitality company came to John and said, hey, we need some help procuring all of our in-room supplies. Think of the in-room collaterals, the, the notebooks and all that type of stuff. And John being the connector of people that he is says, well, let me, let me reach into my network and figure out who I can connect you with. And the response back was, no, no, you don't get it. We need somebody to do it all. <laughs> and so John essentially being the entrepreneur that oh, he yeah. is said, we'll figure it out. Yes. And that, that, that was born into what we used to call the graphics and technology group. And as that, as that group evolved from simply just being a, called a fulfillment house or a print broker, it evolved into the true marketing supply chain team that you see today. And that's, that's why it got rebranded as Envision. 
So it's really a customer centric story of the customer coming to us with a challenge and John figuring out a way to solve it, even though he had no background or business in this space prior to that request. And uh, how many decades later? We got three decades and, and humming right now. It's, it's been a very successful branch to our business. And what's exciting for my sales team in Chicago and, and across the country is Envision now is, is another product class or line that we can sell. So holiday promotions come around, you know, commercial real estate office buildings, the property managers are needing to buy gifts for, um, for their tenants. Mm -hmm. We can help them with that, not just toilet paper and chemicals. And Dude, soap. that's... That's fantastic, man. I, I think about it, that's an uh, opportunity presented itself. He took advantage. That gives you guys a lot more to really offer, right? Your Absolutely. service offerings mm -hmm. just went from, you know, stuck into a janitorial closet or like a manufacturing plant to, hey, let, actually put me in touch with your marketing department because yeah. I can procure that as well. Yeah, and for any procurement person, guess what? These days we have labor as an issue, right? And yeah. so people have to wear multi multiple hats. Multiple yeah. hats. And so for for a procurement person or someone in decision-making ability to have, I enjoy my relationship with North American. I like them as a vendor for this, but I don't really like the vendor for this or I need more help here to be able to call the same person, to be able to have that same level of service and intimacy to, to get your goals accomplished. That's very impactful. Now, how... Since we're on this topic, because again, this is intriguing to me because I'm I'm big on, you know, just if there's an opportunity, take advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you can't don't put yourself in a bad position, but like again, take advantage of the opportunity. Now, Eric, is it the same teams that are handling everything or how is I mean, there's gotta be a lot of departments here that we're gonna that we're gonna see when we're we're it is, it is, yeah. Okay. So the, the the warehouse operations all all one team uh, okay. on the back of the house. So from an operational perspective, it is all one team. Um, depending on the account, some of these larger program Fortune 500 type accounts will have their own account team that literally can have okay. people on site within within our client's marketing program. As Costa mentioned, with COVID, a lot of people had to adapt and, and change a little bit. We got a little bit more into the transactional world where up and down the street, we can be competitive with branded materials and those types of things. And, and that, would be, that would be the same team as Costa manages yeah. on the facility side of our so, business. And then Costa, so commercial real estate, is that where you would meet some BSCs as well? Or is it more property management and then you guys also have a BSC sector? Yeah, so I'm actually, I say commercial real estate and it just becomes a long run on, but it's commercial real estate and BSCs. Okay. That, is, that is our bread and butter. Okay. That's our division. That's the legacy of where our company has actually been built, built from. And yesterday we were, we were standing on 167 Greens, yeah. 18th floor. I showed you that skyline. We're very proud of that skyline. But as all businesses have evolved, we have a great value proposition with all different businesses, manufacturing, food processing, uh, hospitality and education is a huge sector for us. We've had a lot of success with. And uh, naturally, as COVID happened, a lot of those sectors that I mentioned, commercial real estate, hospitality, education, they're kind of empty. And so we did what most businesses yeah. that are smart do. We pivoted to make sure that we go get money where the money's at and help people where they need help. And so manufacturing has now become a huge opportunity for us. And packaging so there's a lot we're throwing at you oh, there's a lot we can do good. this is good this is good <laughs> actually a uh, question then for you guys is so if me being a bsc because now that i see some of the stuff like i've seen requests from our from some of our clients or just you know topics brought up about marketing and about things like this the does a bsc op or are you guys open to do delivering this service to bscs as well as a yeah yeah. As an add-on or like, a, hey, we could do both services for you, not just supplies? Yeah, we have uh, several BSCs that buy the chemicals from us. They buy the, the Jansan supplies where they can pr uh, put it into the uh, facilities they clean. But for their employees that are wearing the shirts, uh, the pants, the jackets, uh, we can put their logos on. We could put route on anything, right? We, we can help a lot of BSCs with outfitting their employees in a professional looking uniform that they're proud of, that they pick, that they vet out and also uh, any signage as they're trying to grow their business. So I should have got my booth design from you guys, is what you're saying. You could have. You could, we could have helped. <laughs> uh, we won't hold that against you, but there's, 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 a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity that we can um, help out with BSCs. They're, they're truly a, actually an interesting player for us in that space because they, they really can benefit from it. Now, and I, you know, I know we're going to keep moving on here, guys, but again, this was pretty neat to walk in here because I was hoping to touch on this, and when I saw Envision on... The website it was like man you know again from the outside looking in i'm thinking it's you know uh, yeah. gonna be a jan sand play uh but no you guys have a lot to offer so i'm i'm hoping you guys see this and if you didn't know north american offered this service i mean you guys did a great job right now and again people can yeah. be in touch to learn more but this is a, a special edition for me just because again 
did not know North American did this. Yeah, and uh, one thing I'll add on is whenever, you know, before I started working here six years ago, I didn't know if you walk into a Bed Bath & Beyond or uh, Serta, Serta Simmons, all the bed displays where you go try and, and sit on the bed, that's all happening by somebody. And so mm. uh, those are a lot of um, the things that we can help out with. Cool. Well, you guys, let's keep it going. Yeah. Let's keep, let's on, keep on walking. So, so we, we, we are privileged to have a nice little cafe here at, at North American. It's a good benefit for us. Saves us a lot of time. Um, and, you know, good, good food every day. You get good, good food options. Um, Taco Tuesdays is the best. Taco oh. Tuesdays is the best. Jose makes well, the best tacos in Chicago. Well, you, got, you have uh, to drive down here yeah. for that. Well, think about this. So it's interesting that we're talking about this. Just like I work out. I have a, I have a personal trainer right now. And the, a topic that we had was, Rick, when you're on the go, 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 you, you know, you don't ha really have a good diet. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're, you don't have time to get out to buy food. You're going to eat whatever's in front of you. So again, this may not seem like it's a big perk, but I got to believe it, it is a perk where if you're off, it's, it's a good solution for, it's quick, for it's the affordable. Team yes. To, to not have to worry about where do I order from? Where do I go out? Mm -hmm. It's here. Mm -hmm. um, not that you want to keep the employees here 24 seven, but yeah. they have a place to, you know, it's their home. Mm -hmm. So. Kudos to you guys for this. I mean, again, it's, you don't think about it, but as you're working, I mean, the go, go, go does affect your diet. Yeah. And, and Jose and Maria who work with us in the back, they're part of the family. They're, they're people that we see every day and they, they know our employees. We know them. And it's just nice to have people here on staff that you feel comfortable with and right. they, they want to make sure that we're nourished and fed well oh, and, yeah. and it's healthy. So they make, Most pro of the time. Do they make protein drinks and what about Taco Tuesdays? Taco Tuesdays. We got to come Taco Tuesdays? I'm not yes. sure about protein drinks, but yeah. Taco Tuesdays, yes. <laughs> yes. All right. We should have done this on a Tuesday. Cosa and Eric, uh, as we were in the cafeteria, I mean, this obviously sticks out. You guys want to share a little bit about this? One of our biggest initiatives that we have here in, in Glenview is supporting the, the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, part of the American Cancer Society. We started that initiative a few years ago, and every single year our participation has grown. Uh, this year we had a goal of 10,000. Uh, we, from an employee standpoint, far exceeded that. And with some generous donations with our uh, some of our customers and our supplier base, we raised almost 30,000 this year wow. uh, for the cause out of Glenview, which is just, you know, there's a lot of us that have personal stories, uh, connections with it. So it's a great event to be a part of. And again, every year, the last three or four years, we've grown in our participation. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like there's a bug for charitable work here because obviously, you know, yeah. we're, we, we're going to have a little snippet on Kosa's event that he's hosted as well. Yeah. Like, is that part of the North American culture? Would you guys say is like giving back and, and paying it forward? Yeah, we're in the community every day. Our employees feel us a sense of purpose and a connection to charities. Some are literally affected by it. And so uh, we want our employees to be able to feel connected to a larger cause. And, you know, as Eric said, we're really excited that we were able to help out with $30,000 over. And I mean, to thinking about culture, the events that we actually hosted leading up to raise that those funds. It was a bags tournament. It was, oh. it was a free throw and three point contest oh, that I hosted man. here at North American's gym to participate that raised yeah. money. Uh, we did a really beautiful raffle uh, for our employees with some great donations from some of our suppliers and, and clients. Uh, some of the Envision ones, uh, we, we had a lot of great items we gave away and our employees uh, through that experience, they got to enjoy some great events. and. Yeah have fun doing it, which is well, what I'm trying to do with my event as well. You know, well, remember, why we can't said, raising money be fun, right? Yeah, that, I was gonna, that's what I was going to say is it's you guys are making it fun. And again, we said we're in the people business uh, to build a team culture. Again, cleaning industry, right? And, and janitorial supplies and mm -hmm. some of the things that we do right all together in this community. Uh, it doesn't look sexy. It's not glamorous to many, no. but things that you're doing like that, things like this, it, it, it's not just about how much money the, the team members can make or you know, a raise and yeah. things. It's they they stay loyal and they retain mm -hmm. working with the brand and the companies because of things like this. Like, yeah, no and, and the the culture aspect of it is we didn't just have sales leading the charge. It was customer service yeah. and sales and operations and finance and warehouse. The whole entire company got behind and rallied to do really great things for a certain charitable cause. And that's that's when the culture of a company really shines yep. through. When yep. everyone together is is going towards the same direction. And that's oh, yeah. that's the beautiful part that I genuinely appreciate it so you guys got a stronger together culture here that's what you got you got the copyright <laughs> and the branding we're just trying no to but <laughs> i mean it's it just resonates over and over again so I, again kudos to you guys for doing stuff like this because these are the things that count in my opinion it's the no purpose doubt. behind it the intention behind it um again it's not about you me 
it's us. It's right? us yeah. I want to, I want to welcome you all. This is a sacred place for North American <laughs> and Eric and me for sure. It's, it's home to a lot of great moments. Uh, you know, actually we'll share later, but how Eric and I kind of started working together and some of the interview process and how this came into play. We'll, sh we'll save that for later, but, nice. but yeah, mo Mondays, uh, before COVID we stopped. And then after COVID we Mondays at five o'clock, enjoy playing some hoops here. We'll do a three on three and at five o'clock Mondays, we'll get customer service and we'll get, uh, finance guys and warehouse guys and sales guys, and we'll come and we'll battle each other. And it's a lot of fun. And between these walls, there's been a lot of good rivalries built, a lot of good memories built, a lot of good game winners made, oh, and man. some uh, some tough losses that have happened. But it's been it's been a lot of fun. And this guy this guy's got a good jump shot, so it's always fun. Me and him like to go against each other, and we typically aren't on the same team because you can't have two great you shooters. Two, you can't have two great shooters. Yeah, we would be actually pretty good three on three right here too. Let's go. Let's do it. So you guys, like, again, culture is such a big thing, and I gotta believe, you know, job, work is tough. Uh, the economy is tough. Mm -hmm. People have issues at home with their families and we don't, not everybody knows what people are going through every day. Right. But I feel like if you walk through these doors and you're playing a sport, that's why I feel like sports is such a big yeah. deal for, you know, us as, as a human race. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like they check that at the door. They have mm -hmm. some fun here and you almost are able to help them leave better. Right. You never know when somebody walks in the office that morning, mm -hmm. what they're going through. So the fact that, again, you guys have these little things. These are perks, man. They're it's, great it's, perks. You know, it's also a change of level in here because as Costa said, you're getting people from all, yeah, all areas levels. and levels of the organization yeah. and everyone's a basketball player when you get out here. So yeah. it's, it's a good chance to build some camaraderie that way. And I mean, the size, so one thing we didn't even touch on, we could touch on it here too. North American as a company, like what, what is the size? I mean, you know, how many employees mm -hmm. does North American have here? Uh, we're about 250 to, uh, certainly depends on the hybrid work schedule these days, but okay. somewhere around 250 to 275 called Glenview Home. And okay. that incorporates what we'll call Legacy North American. Okay. And that is a part of Envoy Solutions. This is Envoy Solutions corporate office as well. Okay. So 250, again, you, you said it earlier, like the, some of these departments and these people may never talk to each other on a daily, ba weekly, Absolutely. monthly basis. Yeah. So again, coming here, so the, fact, the cafeteria itself too, right? It's like, mm -hmm. those are grounds of connections. It's so true. And I can tell you when it comes to working within departments together, it's so much easier to pick up a phone call or make a phone call to somebody in a different department in accounting or finance because sales and finance typically it's like, uh, you know, the yeah, the rivalry, right? But you overbid, you underbid, yeah, yeah, I'm not but, paying. <laughs> but you get in here and uh, you, you know that uh, they got families. I got families. Some of my best conversations have been here before games, after games uh. and, uh, you know, locker room talk. And it's just, it keeps it real. And it's, yeah. you know, this is, this is like a conduit. Yeah. It's a nice conduit for, it doesn't matter what department you're from. Yeah. And we've had suppliers and uh, customers join us as well. So we've, okay. this is an open opportunity for. So you mean like the route Rosalotto team could come in here? Uh, if, if you take, take the top three. If you're willing to take on the competition <laughs> at, at NA, come on in. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys. Awesome, man. Well, thank you guys for letting yeah. us come in yeah. to this space. This, this mm -hmm. truly does show again, continues to show the consistency for, of the culture that you guys are trying to build here at North American. Kosa, Eric, we're walking into the warehouse. Yep. Kosa, you mentioned you got a story on, yeah. on the banners that we see up there in the back top. Yeah, if you, if you look over there, you see the North American logo and the Chicago Blackhawks logo. So the Blackhawks had a nice run within the last 10 years. It's been rough lately, but we're, rough. we're excited <laughs> now. Uh, but uh, our owner, John, he, you know, longtime childhood friends with Rocky Warts, rest in peace, uh, who just recently passed away. And, uh, one of the, the cool perks North Americans always had is a connection to the Blackhawks. And so when the Stanley Cup championships happened in Chicago, we actually did a really cool client customer event and supplier event where we had the Stanley Cup right here in our warehouse wow. at the end. And there was a line of people, our clients and our customer, from there all the way into the parking lot and Willow Road, the way you got here to, to our office was back up with cars. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, it, it was a big deal. I've heard stories. I wasn't here at that time, but some of the, the longest customers we've had still brag and have pictures about it. about it. And it was a really special event to have that. And uh, uh, I don't know, were you here at that time? I was, and yeah. we did, so we actually did a family event during the day. So we, I got to bring my wife, kids, parents one time, and they got a chance to see it uh, during the day and then clear out the families. And then the, the customer event came in, in the evening and it was first class all the way. And as Costa said, we, there's still a lot of people on LinkedIn who have their picture with the Stanley Cup in our warehouse. Oh, I mean, again, the, yeah. 
unique experience. You totally. know, and it's you you made that memory with those customers and clients. This is headquarters, but is this the only facility you guys have, or do you have other locations than I mean, the Wisconsin one was one or still is one? So North American, under the North American umbrella, we've got Glenview here. And then we also have one down in the Miami area. We okay. support some business down there. Uh, but as a part of Envoy Solutions, we are up over 80 distribution centers. And uh, we'll be joining forces with another company here in the next uh, in the coming days, imminently, with uh, the Brady IFS team, hopefully. Um, that is public news. That, that merger was announced about a month and a half ago. And so is that Brady and Envoy? Therefore, you guys as well. It will right? it will come together and be the largest, if not the second largest, janitorial distribution company uh, in the entire country, and we're excited about what that brings. We'll have well over a hundred uh, warehouses across the country at that point. Shout out to Chris and Richard over at Brady IFS. Those are good friends of mine. We have about forty three associates, depending depending on the, the situation, across three shifts. The in, so all of the inbound that you see coming in, all of our inbound happens on first shift. We're taking in 13 to 15 truckloads a day, plus all the LTL drops and everything else. So our receiving operations pretty busy relative to most warehouses. Outbound is all of our Envision on first shift, and you'll see that as we get to the back half of the warehouse. All of our commercial products, packaging, and everything else goes out overnight on our third shift. This, the warehouse is laid out to try as best we can. It's not perfect where it's kind of, it builds from the slower moving, heavier items into what, what Costa was pointing out is our bulk area. You'll, as you're walking through, you'll see the bulk area. Each of these has a location. You see it up on the ceiling. Okay. All the products in here as a, as a combination turns about every two weeks. So the entire bulk the entire, area, the entire bulk two area every two weeks is wow. brand new. Just keeps on flowing. So it doesn't, like for example, some of our clean line, our private uh, exclusive brand bath tissue, makes no sense to, to put it away and then immediately have to pick it and pull it. So let me ask you guys, obviously, everybody dealt with the back orders and you know you had to have like your second third fourth option of supplies how did you guys handle that during covid and what, how has that prepared you guys obviously you're stocked up appropriately you guys know what the, the orders are coming in like how did you manage the logistics of this just the supply chain so to, i mean the, the we mentioned the people earlier legit that's not a that's not a that's not a cliche it's the people that we have running our purchasing team the, the leverage that we have, the relationships we have with the suppliers to try to get the inventory when it was when it was tight was critical for us. I think the other thing is because we're so diverse in our customer base, so we're calling on hospitals and schools and office buildings and hotels and colleges, you name mm -hmm. it. If one segment dropped, like office buildings, we still had allocation from the supplier to be able to come in and then take that allocation over to healthcare or some other critical areas that weren't, that weren't stopping. So the ability to have all of that variation of supply helped us keep it going. Now, some things were just impossible to get yeah. at the rate we needed to get them. Uh, sanitizer, for example. We probably sold double the two and a half times the amount of sanitizer we normally would in 2020. It was an anomaly. <laughs> All of with that, we were under back order for the better part of a year. Wow. Even the fact that we were two and a half times the amount of sanitizer out there. So at some point, there's, there's a limit and constraint to the supply chain. But I would suggest... We were actually to the point where we were able to sell our bath tissue to grocery stores who then were able to, in an unusual fashion, just put a pallet of bath tissue out, Chinese. cut a hole in the box, and Chinese. sell it by the roll. Sell it by the <laughs> so we, we, were, we were somewhat uniquely positioned through that because we're so diverse. Um, but I, I think would, we I would add, better than our... And I would add that during the, the pandemic, during the challenges 2020, 2021, even parts of 2022, our sales team got a lot more intimate with our procurement team and understood how important it is to talk to our procurement team who is buying from manufacturers. And so as we came out of the pandemic and we're in a more normalcy of, of a supply chain, our sales team is now when they win new business, they're forecasting into yeah. our procurement team, helping them do their part and buy better, buy smarter and more in advance. So it, it, it gained them uh, or they gained knowledge base uh, where they wouldn't have had so yeah, and I'm telling you, a lot of good things came out of that. I mean, the fact that I always, it's a good analogy of us as BSCs, we have that sales to ops handoff. Mm -hmm. And it's always like, oh, you know, you oversold, that's not the scope of work, this, you know, how can I, uh, when sales does know a little bit of ops and ops knows a little bit of sales, it makes it more efficient. Well, uh, like our, our teams do that. I always tell people they should do that because to your point, mm -hmm. now the sales team knows how it feels from the procurement side. There's empathy on There's both empathy. sides. Yeah, you got to be empathetic. Uh, you know, and I, and I got to give a hats off to the warehouse team. A lot of us went remote for a while. Right? Yeah. 
they have where else do you never stop? They never stop. We got guys that have been here now 27 years is our, our most t- tenured guy. So we've got a, we got a great crew here. They operated throughout the whole thing. Uh, and fitting to the cleaning and cocktails name of the podcast, there may or may not have been a few of us, I'll call it a purchasing and cocktails daily call that we had towards the end of the day. Yeah. So really understand what- 501 what we, tequila shots. No. Well, no, yeah. but it's basically yeah. to, Basically to say, hey, what do we have in stock and what are the orders that came in? And we had to prioritize certain markets like healthcare had to get prioritized. Our hospital clients, without a doubt, couldn't be without product. And so we had to have those conversations as sales leaders at the time with our procurement team and our category team and our warehouse team all getting together and say, okay, what do we got? What can we get out the door and how do we get it there successfully? So it's not it's not one of those things we just relied on our systems to say, well, they ordered it, ship it. We really had to be specific and how we took care of our client base during that time yeah so talking to the audience you guys uh again i love these on sites eric and costa because of this like this is how big our industry is right this is again so i have a much more bigger respect for the supply space the distributors manufacturers because it is the other component for for bscs like bscs build their companies we are selling and winning contracts the next thing is, where am I ordering supplies? What supplies come at a good cost? It's a it's a one two percent business yeah. where, if we don't have good pricing and good partners, uh, and have access to what you guys have at places like this, it's we lose a contract. Yeah, we're you, don't all, win, you don't win that contract because you don't have a right partner. Exactly, we're all part of the same ecosystem that's trying to get to the same place and take care of our end users and make sure their facilities are clean and stocked with products that make sense. From the D rack that the label's off right yeah. now on over is all Envision. Okay. Now we've got a lot of Envision clients that's on that more transactional side, which would be if you needed something, you'd place an order, we would ship it. These are the more program style accounts. Yeah, like th- things are on site. And you'll see there that's bundled in 25. Okay. But if the, if the if the council orders it at a quantity of 83, they get three bundles and they get 83. And they get <laughs> they get eight more. Oh, wow. So it's a, it's, a, it's a really unique account. So then we do the forms in the fall and that's quiet, basically December, January, February, March. And then depending on what the girls sell, it goes into reward season. So they get the rewards like little plush dolls and flashlights and sunglasses and all that. They get to choose from the catalog. We bring all that merchandise in yeah, and, and then we ship that out across the country. Everything, yeah. everything that you see from DIL down is customer owned inventory. Okay. So, so we work with them on the procurement side of it. We work with them on the fulfillment side of it, uh, but they own it. And everything on the Jansan side is obviously not customer specific. So it's owned by the customers we ship. Would you agree, Eric, that some of the reasons why they would implement a program like that is because they, they want the expertise of people to just take care of it for them instead of hiring internally three, four staff members or whole departments. They just say, you guys are the experts, you do marketing, you. Do you. Marketing, the challenge that most companies have is that to try to get marketing and ops together can be challenging. Oh yeah. Marketing people aren't operators and operators aren't marketers. If you come through Envision, we, we do it all. So we've got, a, we've got a consulting team, we've got the marketing team literally to be on site with some of our clients. And then we've got the execution to, to make it happen operation. So to Coach's point, it's a lot of folks are starting to outsource that because they want their marketers to focus on marketing and not worry about how product gets them from point A to point yeah. B. Billy, you hear that? Marketing operations, challenging. <laughs> what we went with here, you'll see the, the, not, the aisles have narrowed down, literally narrow aisle technology. All the equipment that goes in and out of these racks runs on this wire guide that runs down the middle. When the equipment gets up to that wire guide, it locks in and it travels. Oh. All the operator needs to do is go back and forth and up and down. That way he doesn't hit a rack. Wow. What it enables us to do, obviously you don't want to heat and cool air, you don't want to pay property taxes on air. So the tighter you can make everything come together, just makes the business more efficient. So we're able to operate in 100,000 square feet, essentially as if it was 200,000 square yeah. feet the way the older portion was built. Cause we got, we when we hit this spot right here, we come back, this is all new. Mm-hmm. Two it's years all old, new. two and a half years old. Okay. May of 21. So that's I think crazy to think about though. It's, yeah, it, you operate in 100,000 as efficient and productive as correct 200,000. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Which is why we have we have the capacity. So we closed a hundred thousand square foot warehouse and put it all put here. It here. Yeah. So that opened up some of our front half for capacity for future growth. Jansan, Envision, you name it. Okay. And it, and it might seem, oh yeah, hundred thousand foot expansion. What's the big deal? But to a sales team, 
to see that the company is growing and oh, expanding yeah. and investing, it's subconscious. No, no, it at is, the best it, level. It is every it time is. I walk back, you forget the perspective. It's a long ass. Aisle. No, yeah, that is a long <laughs> aisle. And the fact that you said it lines up right here, fire guided. Like, All the guys got to do it'll lock in, it'll beep, 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 and he just goes forward, backward, up and down. That's it. It's a logistics game, man. It is. This has got to be efficient. Logistics. You need space. <laughs>